Hey, it's Nick, live from the office. And today, you might notice uh, it looks it doesn't look very nice in here, does it? it uh, it's all dark and stuff. And uh, the reason why is today we're doing another big little filmmaking tips. Now today, we're going to talk about that thing which is so wrong in here right now. And that is the light. <clears throat> I was... I know that I covered a light just as like a quick tip before and uh, I kind of promised that uh, some of my future videos would be on very basic concepts and that um, I would try to come at it very simply so that you could understand it and incorporate it in your own films. So that's what we're going to talk about right now. Now, as you can see, the, uh, well you can't see, but basically I just, I have no lighting on in here. Uh, I've got some curtains over my windows. These are just basic white curtains. And so the, the lighting, it's just kind of blah. You know, there's, there's not really much going on here. So the most important thing in filmmaking is controlling your environment. A lot of people, whenever they first come into film, they seem to want cameras that can shoot in very, very low light so that they just don't even have to light. Now that, while there are certain like film manifestos and things um, which uh, depend directly on only using natural light and things like that, um, personally, I would not go for that and definitely not as the first thing that you're doing. If you're not very experienced in lighting, I would not jump into an advanced filmmaking um, style uh, like trying to use natural light. I think it's very important to know the basic rules that way, you can break those basic rules. So, the very first thing that we're going to do right here is I'm going to turn on a light real quick, just so you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> so, there we go. There. First thing, a little bit of light. So, one of the most important tools that you can have for, for lighting inside of a room, <clears throat> that's basically what I'm going to cover today, is lighting inside something. Now this is a material called duvetine. You don't need something like this, but this is very good if you're doing um, some uh, higher end work, you know, some professional work, because this is uh, uh, flame resistant. Uh, it's, you can put this in very high heat situations and there's gonna, not gonna be a problem. But you don't need something like that. But what you do need is something to block light, something to control light, and some things um, to bounce light as well. So, what I have here today, I'm going to grab a couple of these items that I have. <clears throat> now, this very first one, this is very similar to cardboard. In fact, it's exactly like cardboard, except for it's made of plastic. It's called um, corrugated plastic board. This stuff, you can buy it for like, um, I don't know, two bucks a thing, two, three dollars. Very good for blocking light. You know, get the black one. Uh, I think they make it in different colors, so you could just buy it in white, and then you can have a bounce board. <clears throat> now, what I have right here, before I had talked about balloon material and things like that, and, uh, well, this is a space blanket, um, a warmth blanket, an emergency blanket, <clears throat> and I just stretched it over one of those black boards, and now I have a, a very silvery bounce board right there. That was a real quick one to put together. Now, of course, I've got the duvetine. You don't need that, but what would be good is just pick up some black material from the store. Not something that's too thin. You do want to actually block light with it. And then... Oh, what's this? A cardboard box that's white. Well, that's a bounce board, yo. Anything that you can find, and here you can... I can take this and now it's a bigger bounce board and I can do something with that to bounce some light around. Very good for close-ups and things. So I mean anything that you have laying around you can end up using. You know, that's if it's white you can use it, if it's black and thick you can definitely use it. The the cardboard or the plastic corrugated board is very useful. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pause this 
and we have one light on at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is actually cover the windows with some of this stuff. It only takes a minute or two, but I'm not going to leave you sitting here while I do it. So I'm going to be right back. Okay, so I've covered up the windows. And so now you'll notice, uh, yeah, there's maybe a little bit of light right here. Um, but uh, it, it looks blah again. But what we have right now is we have control of our environment. We can do more with this environment now. Now, what I have right now is basically a one-point lighting setup. You know, and I'll even adjust. Oh, that's about as good as it gets, doesn't it, with that. Uh, oh, damn it, I can't find it. Where is it? Ah, there it is. There we go. We'll add just a little bit there. Now, <clears throat> so what we have right now is control of our environment. We have a very simple one-point lighting setup. We do have a little bit of ambient light, and uh, well, one of the big problems is I didn't close one of those doors. <clears throat> so, that is an important thing, is having control of your environment. And you'll see back there I closed that, because that light out there can also mess with what you're trying to plan on doing in one location. Uh, so even the rest of a place, if you want to have a doorway and show something else, you should light that area as well. So, right now I'm just going to keep it simple and I closed it off. I put some stuff on the windows. Not perfectly, but just enough to get us a, a quick standpoint. Now, you'll notice you can't see much of anything. So... And I'm kind of like, just blah. I'm blah right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, well, I'll light the room first. So what I have right now, and what is very um, good if you're just trying to like generally light, <clears throat> uh, very often what you can do is actually, if you look up and there's a white ceiling, that's a great ceiling. Because then you can bounce the light off that and have a very general lighting all over the place and that's what I've done right now and so there we go now we have some lighting in the room so we have me illuminated we have light for the room we're now in control of how that light acts and now we're gonna we're gonna do one more thing because what we're doing right now is called three-point lighting um, and uh, so what I'm going, actually, well, no, it's, yeah, we're going to do three-point lighting. But, uh, well, actually, we're doing four or something. But whatever, who cares? So, um, but I'm just trying to show you how to light a person. And then you can expand this to light more subjects. So now what we're going to do is we're going to separate me from the background. And I actually, I have that on a dimmer, so I can actually even adjust that. And basically, you'll see what this does is it just kind of separates me from everything. It's basically like a light that just adds a little bit of something. It just kind of like adds a little bit of a light to the face. And it just kind of helps separate me being something from everything else. So that's without it. And I'm just kind of blah. And then there's with it. And it's kind of like, hey, I'm standing in the foreground here so and now what we can do even further because right now we only have a key light that's that's what that one's called right there um we could bring in a bit of fill for me we could kind of like add a little bit more light to my face that's with it that's without it. That's not even really doing much. I actually probably need a stronger light source from that right there. There, that's a little bit stronger. Let's see, that's that light right there. So then we could take some of it and add it back in. Let's 
see that. Nothing, something. So, using things like this, you can... See, where did I put that? I had a cardboard box bounce there. We could use, and we could also um, block part of the general lighting off of me. We could do something like that. We could put this in front of the light and just put a little bit of shadow on me or something. And there's all sorts of things, and that's called a flag whenever you put it in front of the light there. There's all kinds of possibilities. This is all about controlling your environment. Once you do this, you'll start to notice that you'll have ideas. You know, you'll think, like, okay, so now I, I'm in complete control of this environment. Now what can I do with it? Because at its basics, what cinematography is, is painting with light. That is what your job is as a cinematographer, and that's what you should try to do. I understand that maybe not everybody who's watching this is a cinematographer. Maybe you don't want to be a cinematographer. Cinematography is just a means to an end of storytelling. But as a cinematographer, your duties are to paint with light. These are the tools of the trade. The camera is a means to an end for us. We capture what we've created with light. That's what we're trying to do. And by using these tools, like a light here and a light there and a light bouncing off here, we've created this environment where we have control of what gets attention and what does not. Right now, I could be slinking in the background right behind some person who's actually well lit. There's all kinds of little things that you could do. See, like, this makes me look like a person in the shot. This makes me look like some creepy guy in the background. Sneaking up on him. Whatever. But, this is a big little filmmaking tip of controlling your environment. And then, it's as simple as having some simple lights. Like this light that I had right there. And some of the lights that I have set up right now are bigger and stuff. This is that one that I set up right there. It's a clamp light. That's all that is. It's nothing crazy. Nothing insanely fancy. That's a clamp light. That's something you can buy at the store. This is a very high wattage bulb that's in here. This is a 45 watt CFL. So I understand that not everybody has access to those, but you can get stuff like that on eBay and even at the hardware store. You can get some higher wattage ones and uh, work with that. And you can always try to get a piece of white material. Like I have an actual piece of diffusion uh, material right here that I use on that light to diffuse it. You could get one of those like three bulb connectors, connect it in there, put three lower wattage ones if you only have 13s, you can put a few on there, put a piece of white material over it to diffuse that light, <clears throat> and then you could work with it. And I, You want to make sure... To pay attention to what the light says its uh, kind of light is. Because like I'm working with uh, incandescence so I need to match to that. And that CFL that I'm using is actually a daylight bulb. So to make it match it, see that's like way too blue compared to everything else. So I use this thing called a gel and those are only a couple of dollars. And one of the big tools that I use to put things on things Close pins. We call them, I don't know, C47s or some nonsense. Somebody decided to give it some wacky name. But it's close pin. You can use close pins all over the place to attach things to things. They're a wonderful little tool. But, like I said, I mean, you could use one of those three bulb attachments, put three bulbs, and the reason why I say put a piece of diffusion over it, something to soften that light and, like, kind of combine it to be one light, is if you put a few different lights all coming from the same general space, you'll have like these weird 
uh, double, triple, or quadruple shadows all over the place. So you want to be kind of careful about that. And uh, so that's um, kind of like my big little filmmaking tip for today. Control your environment. And get a few lights and clamp ones are very nice. You can even use three bulb attachments to connect extra so you can get more light out of them. Um, and uh, that way you can clamp them in different locations. Like uh, some of the lights that I'm using right now are not those kind. I'm using kind of like some actual film lights and stuff. Like this was the one that was our hair light that was just pointing on my head. Because as you can see the room light's still on. So you can buy stuff like this. But of course those things are expensive. So you can always just stick with clamp lights and stick with CFL bulbs and you'll very quickly start to really appreciate the fact that uh, controlling your environment will give you a lot of freedom actually to do whatever you want to do with the set instead of what mother nature wants to do with your set or what the architecture of a building wants to do with your set. So with a few simple things and just a few bucks, you can really, really improve the images in front of you. And those things are corrugated plastic board to block light, a little bit of like mylar type material to put on even a piece of cardboard, I put it on one of the pieces of uh, corrugated plastic board. That's a nice shiny reflective board for shining some light around. But you could also get this material in white and do about the same. Um, you can grab a piece of white cardboard. Like I've got a eBay box here and you can use that to bounce some light around. And then some black material. You can probably get something at your local store that has fabric. And then you use that to block lighting so that you can control your environment. And then some simple things like clothespins are a very big help to uh, attach things to things and such. And then once you've controlled that lighting, get yourself a clamp light, get yourself a fairly high wattage CFL bulb to put in it, or get one of those three-way adapters so you can put multiple bulbs on, and at the same time, you go to the store and get some black fabric, get some thin white fabric to act as a piece of diffusion so that you don't get multiple shadows. And then, at the end of the day, make sure to either, one, pay attention to what kind of bulbs you buy at the store so that everything has the same color. Or, to make them match, you can buy gels on the internet. This is a quarter CTO, uh, which is uh, just orange, basically. So it's like a quarter orange, and it just basically makes that... Where's a clothespin? Where did I put that clothespin? There's a couple right there. And get wooden clothespins, not plastic. They'll melt on stuff. So you see that made that light match that light so that it wasn't all like weird and blue. But you can even use the light differences to create different effects. So just think about it a little bit. Try to utilize those things, these few simple things. Some pieces of fabric, some pieces of board, something to bounce light and something to make light. Block out those external bits of light and then control your environment because then you have the creative control. So I'm going to end it there. I think I kept that fairly simple. Basically all I'm saying is don't let anybody else or any other thing or nature decide what you're going to do. Block them all out and then build it all up yourself with lights, with things to block light, and then 
bam, that's it. Making light, blocking light, and bouncing light. And then paint with that light. So, that's been another big little filmmaking tip, and I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. So if you have a specific subject that you want me to cover next on cinematography, let me know and I'll jump straight to it. I'm not sure what I'm going to cover next, but I really felt it was important to cover light. Light is our main tool as cinematographers. So with that, in the words of my favorite YouTube musical artist, the ukulele, push the button.